Well, welcome everyone to 700 Club Canada. We are so glad that you are here today. And today we're gonna talk about bold faith. And so some great stories for you, a football player who overcame a cancer diagnosis and a woman who literally utilized the name of Jesus to break up an armed robbery. It is gonna be a great <laughs> addition. Uh, but I today I'm also reminded, <laughs> all right, Lori? Yeah, I know. But today it's I'm so also fantastic. reminded of the persecuted church. And uh, in Myanmar, uh, maybe many don't know, but in that nation, there's been a coup. And so the church is experiencing great persecution. And it just reminded me that all around the world, actually, many of our brothers and sisters in Christ are facing persecution and need bold faith. And so today's a reminder, we all need bold faith. Yeah, that's so true, Bill. You know, some of these stories today, they just kind of encourage me to just, you know, be bold and be courageous. And um especially in Canada, I think now we're facing a time like it's never been before. We don't understand the persecution of our brothers and sisters around the world, certainly to the extent that they experience it. But today we're going to meet uh, David Lynn, uh, Bill. And, you know, David is a street preacher and he's done a lot more things, but God hmm. has called him to the streets. And I'm telling you, he has bold faith. He has been physically like attacked while he's been on the streets. He's been hmm. verbally abused. He's been, you know, taken into to jail for things. Like, it's just really remarkable what David has wow. really endured as a preacher, but he is the most humble. You're gonna just be surprised really by his gentleness. And that's what I love about David. And so hmm. let's meet David now um, as he just shares his heart and his story with us. Well, David Lynn, it is my privilege to welcome you to 700 Club Canada today. Thank you so much for having me. It's an, it's an honor and I've only heard good things. Well, I've only heard good things about you, my friend. I follow <laughs> you personally. I'm so encouraged by your testimony in our country of Canada. For people who don't know you, you are the founder of Christ Forgiveness Ministries, a church planner, an evangelist in Toronto. You are just rocking the streets with the gospel. And David, I want you to tell people this background of really, you're a chaplain, but now like you're a street preacher. Like what led you into street preaching and this outreach ministry that you do in Canada? Well, since I gave my life to the Lord almost about uh, 25 years ago, uh, God just put a passion and fire for the lost. I came from a very broken background, was on the streets, in gangs, uh, even found myself in prison at one point as a teenager. And uh, I just knew uh, from from the start that God uh, uh, was going to use me to reach out to people and wanted me to just be an impact in the community. And that's the same fire that's been burning for the last 25 years. And that's what fuels me, just the call of God on my life. And um, you know, uh, I was actually uh, uh, an associate pastor since uh, 2000 in two different churches before Christ Forgiveness Ministry was formed in 2005. And uh, the CFM, the Christ Forgiveness, is, is more about igniting the body of Christ to authentic biblical Christianity, not just staying in the four walls, uh, making actual disciples, uh, you know, impacting the community on the streets, going into the inner cities in a radical, bold, but loving way. And that's what we've been doing. And we've been seeing a harvest and fruit. And we've been seeing uh, a lot of people ignited uh, around the world. Well, I think that's the key word, ignited. I mean, I think, honestly, you've ignited me. When I watch you and your team, and it's not just the evangelistic outreach that you do, but you're discipling people. Like you guys are committed to the full experience of the gospel in everyone's life and just getting really, can I just say getting believers, you know, up off their couches and let's get moving. And I watched you, my friend, uh, you know, go through some really kind of serious opposition in the streets. Tell us a little bit about what happened in Vancouver and when you were sharing the gospel and boy, you took some heat out there. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, we went there and we always go out in the streets to seek and save the lost. And I guess the Vancouver community, uh, you know, I guess either they found out that I was coming and certain members of Vancouver, not everybody, but certain members of the community just, I guess, didn't 
didn't like, I guess, uh, the message of the gospel. And when we got on the streets, every time we went out, we were always confronted by a particular uh, segment of the Vancouver, a very small segment, but, uh, it, you know, they made a big noise um, and all the media started blacklisting me, calling me all sorts of things that were not true um, and followed me to the point that uh, when we were actually doing our baptisms, um, a little away from uh, one particular community, uh, they just, I guess about 300 of them just uh, came around and tried to stop us from our baptism. And uh, But uh, the Lord gave us grace to continue on and just go forth. And surprisingly, uh, <laughs> the police force came around to ensure that we had the freedoms to baptize people. And it, it, it's really sad that it's coming down to a time where baptizing people is an offense to others that, uh, you know, mm -hmm. but... Uh, but you know what? Many people were inspired. Many people gave their lives to the Lord uh, in that experience. And, um, you know, um, many people are rising up in the Vancouver community to preach the gospel to those who want to hear the gospel. Yeah. Well, you know, I think there's a move in Canada of people rising up to preach the gospel. Whether you're a formal, pre you know, street preacher, we are all called to preach the gospel. Amen. But Amen. fear is a real thing. Like, this is a question I want to know from, I think you're one of the bravest people I know out there. What is your antidote for overcoming fear and sharing the gospel? It's an experience. You know, when you know that God is real, um, that, that changes everything. And, you know, when you, you've actually encountered the Lord, whether in dream or, or just heard his voice in, in, in your spirit, um, he gives you the, the passion to move forward despite all the odds. And so, you know, the, the message I believe is exactly what Christ said in Mark chapter 1. Um, uh, or, or, or rather, yeah, Mark chapter 117, it says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He'll give you the DNA to go out there and he'll give you the strength to deny yourself, pick up your cross. And why do we deny ourselves? It's because we know that, that we're going to be with Christ and he's coming. And when you have that experience, uh, he gives you that courage by the Holy Spirit. He says, I'm, I'm going to give you power to be my witnesses, my martyrs on this world. And so, you know, just knowing uh, just having a real relationship with God helps you to see that you don't have to be afraid of the things of the world. You don't have to hold on to anything because uh, God has something better in store for you. So that that just fuels me to, yeah. to keep serving him uh, regardless of the odds. Well, I, I see that in you. I see this uh, confidence, first of all, in the gospel. You are fully convinced of it. And when we're fully convinced of the gospel, that actually changes people's lives, right? That gives us courage, but you're also compassionate, David. And I just want to encourage you that I see the true. You do this because you love people, and and you've experienced Christ move in your own life. Is that what keeps you going? Do you have some favorite stories of what you see God doing in Canada? Yeah, you know, um, it's it's amazing. The Bible says the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. Um, when I gave my life to the Lord, like I said before, I, I came from a broken place and. And just to know that God loved me and, and was willing to forgive me through Christ, that that gave me a compassion for others. The Bible says those who are forgiven much love much. And um, yeah. I'm not perfect, but but God's love just compels me to reach people like myself and, and pretty much any person in any community because we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Um, you know, uh, when I see, uh, when, I, when I preach on the streets and I... I, I notice people standing and listening. I, I see the impact of the gospel. I see the tears coming down their eyes. And, you know, when they come forward and asking questions, I realize that all of us are just looking for the answers. We're looking for love. We're looking for hope. We're looking for forgiveness. Every, every person, no matter what religion or background. And when the gospel is presented, it meets that need. And I've seen with my own eyes, people get delivered from demons. People get healed on the spot. People being transformed, mm -hmm. people coming from all walks of life saying, I'm ready to give my life to the Lord. And that's that's the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the gospel moving. It has nothing to do with me. It's simply that uh, the God's word is true. It never comes back void. And uh, God is God is saving. And, and right now, I mean, we're seeing communities uh, all around Canada uh, just rising up in big numbers. Um, you know, not, not, not millions, but but uh, large groups of people ready to say, you know what, I, I don't want to live by the status quo anymore. I, I, I don't want to just sit in church and just, just kind of go through motions. I actually want to be a part 
of the gospel. I want to be a part of impacting my community. I'm seeing that, and uh, it's exciting, very exciting. Yeah. Well, that's what Jesus came to, to, to show us, not only you know, who he was, but that he was our model. Like, this is how we can live. We can experience the miraculous. And and I too have seen it, David, and I know that God is doing powerful things across our nation. There's a fresh move of God. And what would you say to our viewers who are watching? They go, I'm not a street preacher. I, I just have trouble sharing my faith. Like, what do, what do I do? I want to experience more in my Christian life. What would you say to them? Well, you don't have to be a street preacher to, to be impactful in, in, in your community or wherever you at you are, because we all have a sphere of influence. Uh, you, you have friends, relatives, associates, neighbors, strangers in your sphere, and that uh, is what God has called you uh, uh, or put a place you to uh, be a part of. And um, I, I guess sometimes in life we, we, don't, we don't see the big picture or it seems God is distant because everything around us is saying the opposite, and uh, you, you know many may not know where to start um, and not may not know where to go. But um, what I would say to that person is um, uh, first, just be honest with yourself and ask yourself what are you really looking for. And I, I would say the best place to look is is just open up the Bible and and, and just read it. Um, allow your thoughts to just you know in your mind to wrestle with that and, and, and I believe that as you read the word it's, it's going to give you the answers you're looking for and point you to the reality of a God and that reality is there that voice is there it's just been very it, it's just been dimmed down because of the other voices in this world so when you just get away and just ask yourself these tough questions read the word God is going to show you his his truth and, and just pray just seek the Lord ask him to show himself and every time I've always told people to do that, or I've done that myself. God has always made his voice and his presence very known, whether it's in the experiences of life. People will come to me and, 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 and say certain things I needed to hear. And, and so that's what I would say. And, and the moment you hear that voice uh, and you discover the reality of God in your life, um, God is going to make it crystal clear. He's going he's gonna to show you the people around you, and, and you're going you're gonna to be able to— you don't have to be me. You don't have to be a, a pastor— but you're going to have a story to share with the people that are near to you. And that story is very important. You are very important. That's why you're here. Uh, I remember my, uh, you know, a family member who was born out of wedlock. One day he questioned himself, like, you know, why am I here? And then all of a sudden he came up with this good answer. He said, you know what? If God didn't want me here, I wouldn't have been here. You're on this earth for a reason. That's why you're here. And, and you have a purpose. Yeah. And, um, that purpose is right in front of you. It's right in front of you. That's it. That is it. Thank you, David. Um, thank you yeah. for what you're doing. Thank you for your obedience and your bravery. Thank you for your example. If you want to know more about David Lynn, go to 700club.ca. We'll have all the information there. If you need some courage, you need a boost of bravery, watch David and get on with doing the things Jesus tells you to do because there's nothing but joy in store for you. Thanks, David. So appreciate you. No problem. God bless you. At six foot three and nearly 300 pounds of solid muscle, Kentucky defensive end Josh Pascal strikes fear in the hearts of opposing teams. A warrior on the field. This future NFL star is known by his teammates and coaches as someone with the highest integrity. He's one of those players that you only get so many in your coaching career, that it's not just that he's a really talented athlete, but that he's a incredible human being, an incredible young man. Josh's dreams of playing in the NFL began at the age of five. Even when I was little, I would go outside, uh, get the kids in the neighborhood, and we'll have a big game right in the middle of the field. I would act like I was an NFL player. I had my jersey on while we were outside playing, and when I would score, I would celebrate like the pros do. Though his parents raised him in a Christian home, Josh didn't commit to becoming a Christian. To me, it was just something that you do every Sunday. It didn't mean, it didn't have that deeper meaning to me. That all changed in 2018 during his sophomore season while attending an FCA event. He stayed afterwards and in his humble, quiet, 
confident self that he is, he asked, he said, uh, I would love to talk to you tonight about giving my life to Christ. I felt joyful. I saw what it looked like to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, not just um, pray to him when times get hard or anything like that, but have a full-on relationship with him to trust him and to let him guide your life. Times got hard quickly for Josh. Just four months after his profession of faith, the team trainer suggested he get a spot on his foot checked out by a doctor. The biopsy revealed the spot was a malignant melanoma, cancer. Josh's response wasn't a concern for himself, but for his family and his teammates. Seeing how they reacted to it, I really wanted to stay strong in order to keep them strong as well, to know that, um, for them to know that I had it and that I was going to fight it and we were going to be okay. Kentucky head coach Mark Stoops says that Josh's commitment to follow Jesus just a few months before his diagnosis became his strength. That has a lot to do with his faith and in his relationship with Christ and, and uh, how far he's come. And he's just a very confident and very matter of fact person. And instead of questioning God's goodness, Josh trusted more fully in God. It was a time where I knew I had my faith. I knew who I was living for and why I'm here. And so I leaned on the Lord and I trusted in him. And no matter the outcome, um, I knew it was in his plan and that's how I got through it. Still, the cancer required not one, but three surgeries. Josh's recovery was difficult. He even had to learn to walk again. His dedication to rehab and getting back on the field inspired his teammates and coaches. He was a sort of beacon of strength for our team. Whether he could be on the field or not, you know, in that time when he was struggling and he was diagnosed, he was, whenever he showed up, he had a smile on his face, he was encouraging his teammates, and everybody drew strength from that. Like a true warrior, just four months after surgery, Josh worked his way back onto the field and into the starting lineup, cancer-free. Let's talk about Josh Pascoe for a moment, Ray. This is his first action of the year, and he is finally back. And, and he's got that clean bill of health out here today. It's a great, uh, uplifting feeling for this Kentucky Wildcat football program. It just didn't look like it was possible, but, you know, through Christ, all things are possible, and I believe that. It means a whole lot more when you know what he's been through, and he's walking through his cancer and surviving, his perseverance, his attitudes toward life. He is a man that knows that he has been blessed by grace, and he just gives grace to others. I believe that he used me uh, during this time to use my platform also for uh, young men like me who haven't trusted in the Lord yet. And they're thinking about it and they're on that edge and they see this video and they're like, wow, this is something I really wanna, um, I really wanna learn more about. Jesus is the king, the one true king. And he's loving, he's caring, and he's a father. And he's our heavenly father. He's always here, he's always in the room with you. And that's something I believe that I will never be alone because I have the Lord and he's everywhere um, around me, next to me, and everything that I do. You know, I just love that story of Josh's bold faith. When many people would have crushed, been crushed by the diagnosis of cancer, he instead uses as an opportunity to bolster his faith. And as I was thinking about that, I couldn't help but think of the story of Gideon. Um, in the story of Gideon, Judges chapter 6, we read these words. Um, Gideon says to God, pardon me, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. And the Lord answered, I will be with you. And I don't know about you, but there are times in my life when I, I have to go through an experience or something happens to me, and I don't feel very bold. I don't feel very courageous. And this is exactly where Gideon was. He didn't feel like he had what it took to make it the necessary step in his life. And yet God reminded him that I will be with you. And here's what's interesting about bold faith. Sometimes we think it's something that we can manufacture or something inside of us. And if you read the story of Gideon, he actually had no courage inside of him whatsoever. His boldness was actually rooted in a confidence that God was going to deliver him. And even though if you read the story, God's strategy was really unusual. 
It didn't make any sense. The beautiful part of it is that uh, Gideon trusted God, and as a result, not a single soldier in the army was lost. And so I want to just encourage you with this. Bold faith isn't something you have naturally. It's not something you manufacture. It's actually not dependent on you at all. It's trusting in a God who promises that not only will I be with you, but I will work all things together for good. And so if you need help in this area, like I do so many times, I want to encourage you, call us today at 1-855-759-0700. And we'd love to put this pamphlet in your hand. It's simply called Think Boldly, Move Boldly. We'd love to pray with you and believe with you to move forward in confidence that God is fighting for you. Now, speaking of that, next, we're going to learn how a woman repelled an armed robbery in the name of Jesus. Watch this. We both looked at the door, and here comes this dark, ominous figure. He goes, this is a robbery. I want your money. And he taps on my counter with his gun. And when he did that, I was just like, <gasps> Marion Chadwick was raised with loving Christian parents who taught her the power of prayer. There was just never a hesitation that God would heal. He would answer. He would protect. He would uh, be there for any situation that was in our life. It was poured into us um, to trust God, to believe in God. Mom and Dad just always instilled in us to pray, to pray in all things. Prayer was just part of our DNA. Fast forward to January 11th, 2010, a slow day for Marion's boutique shop. Towards the end of the day, she found herself alone with a customer. We did theme bracelets with beads, and she was building a garden bracelet. And I said, oh, well, you need to buy a sparrow for your garden bracelet. She said, well, isn't there a, a scripture about the sparrow in the Bible? And I said, yes. His eye is on the sparrow. He watches over me. And so we got goosebumps and we cried a little bit at the tears. We heard the bell go off at the front door and we both looked at the door and here comes this dark, ominous figure with something in his hand. And he walks up to the counter and he goes, um, this is a robbery. I want your money. He goes, lady, I'm serious. And he taps on my counter with his gun. And when he did that, I was just like, <gasps> and my finger went in his face and I start rebuking him in the name of Jesus. He stepped back a second and he points the gun at my customer and he said, get on the floor. And I said, no, in the name of Jesus, get out of my store. I knew that Satan was in that man, but I knew that I had power in me that was greater than him. And he backed up and he backed up a few more steps and he got about halfway to the front and he turned around and he took off. The power of God was so heavy in the store, but it was like peaceful. Miriam called the police and the man was later caught. She credits her actions to the power of God and her parents' teaching. Now I look back and I see how thankful I am that they were praying parents and believing parents. You've got to teach your children. You've got to give them an opportunity to experience the power of God in their life. We were given that opportunity the whole time we were raised to see miracles, to see people healed and delivered. And that came from when we were very young. It was just instilled in us. We were kids. We didn't understand all of it. But when you get older and you look back, you could figure out what was real and what wasn't. The Bible says, raise up a child in the way he should go, and when he grows old, he won't depart from it. And I think that's the probably the core message of what happened on January 11th, is that I was raised in a way that I did not depart from my parents. I didn't depart from the things I knew in my spirit, in my soul that would rescue me in any situation. I don't know about you, Lori, but I needed this reminder today that I need boldness in my faith. And watching that story of that armed robbery, wasn't that amazing? That was amazing. I just thought, man, I want to be like Mary. And like, <laughs> why do we cower, Bill? Like our first response often is, 
we cower, we hold back. But she was just like, bam, in the name of Jesus, you're out of here. I love it. And you know, our friend David Lynn today, that's how he operates. He's just got such boldness. And I feel encouraged today. What about you? You ready to go? <laughs> yeah. Well, I just, I just feel like someone watching, uh, myself included, needed this reminder that this boldness, again, maybe you feel like I don't feel very courageous or very strong. That's okay. Because God is courageous and God is strong. And so you can trust him. And man, that gives me confidence, Dave. God is for me. Who can be against me? That is such a powerful promise that you can live in right now. That's right, it. Bill. And you reminded us with Gideon's story, like the truth of 1 John 4, 4 is really greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Like hmm. that's why we can be bold because of the God that lives in us. And this is what I love about Pat Robertson's story and his autobiography. He truly learned and continues to walk in the Holy Spirit and the power that resides in him. Otherwise, he would never have been able to face a lot of the adversity that has come his way. You want to read this book. So give us a call, 1-855-759-0700. This is our thank you gift for those of you who choose to partner with us. You can start as low as $20 a month or your best gift, but please call us today, become a partner, and we'll send you this inspiring uh, autobiography by Pat. Yeah, and, and so one of the ways that we can access this courage is through prayer, the power of prayer. And when we pray, uh, we're not begging God because we're his children. We're asking, knowing that he's a good father. And not only does he hear us, but that he's actually going to move on our behalf. And that gives us courage. And so today we want to pray. Cheryl, you sent a prayer request. You said, please pray for my sister that she would be guided by Jesus to have strength courage and wisdom to start her life over. What a great request. That's a great request. And Robin said, please pray for my son's chemo treatment to be short and successful. He's only 17. Well, Bill, why don't you mm. take those requests for us? Yeah, absolutely. So Father, I begin by aligning myself with your power and your ability, not mine. In my own strength, in my own ability, sometimes I feel weak. But God, in this moment, I declare, I proclaim, not only for myself, but for all of those who are praying with me right now, that you would give us the boldness to believe in faith that, God, you do work all things together for good. And I can walk with confidence, head held high, knowing that you are fighting for me. So thank you for victory. And so I do pray for Cheryl and Robin. I pray that you would bring the victory they need in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, thanks for watching today. And go live boldly today in the power of the Spirit. <laughs> To contact us, visit 700club.ca.